Hello friends, today we are going to have a lecture on English grammar with reference to active and passive voice. This is your teacher, Hirak Gupta, assistant professor in the Department of Basic Science and Humanity. My contact number is 89726-18401 and you can write to me at hirk.hu at the rate aecwb.edu.in. The course title for the papers is Effective Technical Communication and Business English in Communication and the course codes are HU101, CEHS301, HMHU501 and MCHU501. So in English grammar there are a lot of things like prepositions, gerunds, negatives, positives, interrogatives, adverbs, but today we are going to focus on voice change with reference to active voice and passive voice. So let us first try to understand what do we mean by voice and what is active and passive voice. Well, voice can be active, that is where the subject does something and it is clearly stated in that way and passive where the focus is mainly on the action and not on the subject. To present it with an example, in case of an active sentence we will say Ram killed Ravan, that is the subject is in focus and the fact of killing Ravan is the second part of the sentence, while as in case of a passive Ravan was killed by Ram where Ravan becomes the focus of action. So what is a voice? Voice refers to the form of verb. Voice of a verb indicates whether its subject is the doer or the receiver of the action. As I said there are two kinds of voices, it's the active voice and the passive voice. With another example, let me try to help you out in understanding it. John planted a tree is an active voice and the passive sentence would be a tree was planted by John. Both the sentences express the same meaning but in the sentence John planted the tree, the subject that is John is the doer of the action. So, the verb planted is said to be in active voice. A verb is in active voice when its form shows that the person or the thing denoted by the subject does something. So, the fact that John plants shows that the person John who is denoted by the subject is doing something. In other words, the subject is the doer of the action. For example, Naveen cooked the food. Here Naveen, who is the subject, is the doer of the action. In passive voice, in the sentence, a tree was planted by John, the subject is the tree and it is the receiver of the action. So the verb was planted is said to be in passive form. A verb is in passive voice when its form shows that something is done to the person or thing denoted by the subject. So in a passive voice the action is done to the subject. So when we say the tree was planted by John, the subject is the tree and something is being done to the tree by John, so it becomes a passive voice. Similarly, the sentence the food was cooked by Navin. Here the subject food is being done, action is taken on the food. That is what is that it is being cooked by Navin. So this is again an example of a passive voice. 
passive voice occurs very commonly in English. It is not merely an alternative to an active voice, but it also has some of its very, very distinctive uses. Let us try to understand it this way with the example of a diagram. In case of an active voice, the doer of the action, the person, is in focus, who is doing the action or the task, and the action follows. In case of a passive voice, things are impersonally stated, so the doer of the action is not very clear or secondary. The action is important. So the focus is on the task. Let us take a subject verb phrase object. The cat was chased by the dog. Now, this sentence and the sentence that we have, the dog chased the cat, are two different sentences having the same meaning. In the first sentence, the subject, and then we have the verb phrase and the object. In the second sentence, we have the subject, the verb phrase, and the agent. So, here we understand how an active sentence can become a passive sentence. Now, let us try to understand where do we use passive voices. Passive voice is used in the following situations. Number one, to make an impersonal statement. Like, it is hoped that the share prices will fall. Number two, to eliminate the mention of an agent. Ravi was found stealing, by whom is not important. So, the agent has been removed there. Similarly, the ship was wrecked. Here again, we eliminate the mentioning of the agent. Sometimes, passive voice is also used to give emphasis to the recipient of the action. For example, English is spoken all over the world. I have been invited to the party. So the recipient here is emphasized. Now let us try to understand the different forms of passive voice. Passive verbs can be formed in the following ways. Number one, a tense of to be plus past participle. Say for example, active sentence would be he plants or planted or has planted or had planted or will plant or will have planted a tree. Or he is or he was planting a tree. In the passive case, the sentence will be a tree is or was or has been or will be planted by him. And it can be a tree is or was being planted by him. So what we do here is we the tense of to be is added to the past participle to create the passive voice. The second way is the modal plus the be verb or have been verb and the plus the past participle. He may or might have planted the tree. A tree may or might have been planted by him. Number three, infinitive. That is to be or to have been plus parts, past participle. So, if the sentence in active is, he is or he was to plant a tree, the passive will be, a tree is to be or a tree was to have been planted by him. In case of an ing form, being 
or having been plus past participle is used. For example, planting or having planted will become being or having been plus planted. Now let us try to understand the conversion from active to passive. If number one, a transitive verb has two objects, any one of the two objects may become the subject in the passive. I taught Ravi English. The passive will be English was taught to Ravi by me or Ravi was taught English by me. So in this case what happens is the transitive verb has two objects Ravi and English. So any one of the objects can become the subject in the passive voice. So both English was taught to Ravi by me and Ravi was taught English by me are correct. Number two, when a prepositional verb is changed from active to passive voice, the preposition should not be dropped. Example, the active sentence is, they laughed at the joker. The passive voice will be, the joker was laughed at by them. So we are not supposed to drop the prepositional verb there. Similarly, number three, to change auxiliary verbs from active to passive, we add B along with the past participle of the verb. For example, Ramesh can do the work in active will become the work can be done by Ramesh in passive. So what we are doing is we are adding the B along with the past participle of the verb. So do becomes done and we add a B so that the sentence becomes the work can be done by Ramesh. Number four, to change the imperative sentences from active to passive voice, the let B is used if the sentence is to remain imperative, otherwise the should be is used. I'll explain with an example. The active sentence is open the door, which is an imperative sentence. The passive form can be let the door be opened or the door should be opened. So what we are doing is in case of an imperative sentence, we are using the let be or the should be in order to change the sentence from the active to the passive but maintaining the imperative sense of the sentence. Similarly, number five, in a transitive verbs, what we do is the change of the imperative sentences into a passive voice is carried out in the following manner. The sentence, sit down, in passive will become, you are ordered to sit down. And number six, sometimes the transitive verb is not changed to passive form, but gives the passive sense, as in cases, sugar tastes sweet, in passive will become, Sugar is sweet when it is tasted. Similarly, in a continuous form, like most continuous forms, the passive continuous is considered with the continuity rather than the completed state of action. Let me explain with an example. In the active sentence, the laborers were cutting the firewood. We'll be changing it to passive by saying the firewood is being cut by the laborers. So the 
continuous form is remaining in the same sense in case of a passive sentence number eight the impersonal use it is the passive voice which offers a useful way of expressing something impersonally. Say for example, people hope that or people believe that in passive will become it is hoped that or it is believed that. So as to create the impersonal sense. Number nine avoiding vague words as subjects this is again something where it has three parts to it number one number a the passive voice is used when we wish to avoid using vague word as a subject for example someone person etc for example the active sentence someone blamed me for his actions in passive will become I was blamed for his actions. We omit the word someone while using the passive form because it sounds vague. Number B, the passive voice is used when the subject is an indefinite pronoun like one. For example, one has to sign the form. So in passive it will not become the form has to be signed by one it will just be the form has to be signed so here again we drop the one which is an indefinite pronoun similarly in num part C the passive voice is obligatory in notices for example loans arranged entry prohibited in these cases the passive voice is obligatory because while writing a notice we tend to write it in a passive voice so let us now try to understand the subjective and the objective case in case of active and a passive voice I generally becomes by me we by us you by you he by him, she by her, it by it and they by them. Now for an active and passive let us see some examples. The active sentence I write a letter has subject, verb and object. While becoming a passive sentence we change the subject and the object interchange them letter becomes the subject by me becomes the object and write the verb form is changed as is written so I write letter in passive will become a letter is written by me similarly we will see how in the different tenses we find the change in the sentence in the present simple tense as we have seen I write a letter becomes a letter is written in the present continuous tense I am writing a letter will become a letter is being written by me in a past simple sense a wrote I wrote a letter is going to become a letter was written by me in the past continuous sense I was writing a letter will be a letter was being written by me in the present perfect tense I have written a letter will become a letter has been written by me in the past perfect tense I had written a letter will become a letter had been written by me in the future simple tense I will write a letter will become a letter will be written by me in the future tense I am going to write a letter will become a letter is going to be written by me the modal sense I must write a letter 
will become a letter must be written by me and in the modal perfect tense I should have written a letter will become a letter should have been written by me so in this sense every sentence keeps on changing the tense again in case of active and passive let's see they speak German in Australia German is spoken in Australia simple present present continuous they are planting some trees some trees are being planted by them past perfect someone has eaten my muffin my muffin has been eaten past simple they closed the road for me the road was closed past continuous he was not feeding his dogs his dogs were not being fed past perfect someone had put out the fire the fire had been put out future simple they will fine you for littering you will be fined for littering future with be going to they are going to raise the taxes the taxes are going to be raised and models you can solve the problem the problem can be solved so students uh, have been giving a number of examples regarding the different kinds of voice changes so that you can have an understanding of how that we change the voices and in what tense how do we change the voices uh, there are some more examples that we have you can go through these examples and here we have a chart where you can try and work out how or where are we exactly using what kind of an active or a passive voice so this is an exercise sheet for you people where you can try and find out the answers for all these 20 questions so whether it's an active or a passive voice and you can write it back to me at my official email id which is hirak.hu at the rate acwb.edu.in Thank you so much. I hope you people have understood voice change, active and passive voice. And if there are any queries, you can get in touch with me. My contact details are there in the first slide of the presentation. Thank you and have a good day.